So this diminutive little laptop is the Huawei MateBook X Pro, which for all intents and purposes is the Windows equivalent of the 13 inch MacBook Pro. I've been lucky enough to use this special little machine for approximately four to five months now, but what are my thoughts? And some good news before we start, now Huawei is able to deal with the US companies again, we don't have to worry about potential availability moving forward. Well firstly let me preface this by saying that this is actually my outright favourite laptop, not the outright best I've ever used as that honour belongs to the Lenovo ThinkPad X1, so check out my review via the card in the upper right. Part of the reason for that claim is the form factor, so let's talk that and of course the design, because this is where I think the MacBook X Pro really steals the show from just about every other laptop on the market, hands down. It's just so slim and svelte, the package is compact, but there seems to be very little sacrifice in terms of footprint, although I'll discuss the lack of ports slightly later on. The display is definitely the star of the show for me, it's a 3000 by 2000 pixel 13.9 inch panel with a 3 to 2 ratio that looks simply stunning from all angles. It manages to reach a max brightness of 450 nits, along with 100% sRGB colour with a 1500 to 1 contrast ratio. One look at that lack of bezel, it's amazing in the flesh and even better in practice. Because the bezel is just so slim, you're getting a much smaller overall chassis, which in turn gives the illusion of an even bigger display by proxy. Oh, and it's completely touchscreen too. Not that I use the touchscreen all that often, but the option is there and it does work really well in practice, except for garnering fingerprints. Fingerprints are the bane of the glossy display, you will find yourself wiping and cleaning at every opportunity, it's one of the core reasons I do try to avoid using the touchscreen, although I will say the inclusion of the option to scroll, swipe and tap at my display is a really nice addition. While the display is gorgeous from most angles, you do get some minor colour shifting at angles over 90 degrees, granted you probably wouldn't view your display from such an awkward angle in most cases. You can adjust the hinge of the display to around about 178 degrees, which isn't the best, but I am happy with it in all honesty, as it doesn't have too much wobble or flex when you push and pull it around, which is a massive bonus. When closed this is a sleek machine, and along the edge there isn't really a lot of input ports and extras. It's one of the core reasons I've picked up the Moshi multi-port adapter, an expensive way to increase the solitary USB-A port on the right side and headphone port, plus dual USB-C ports on the left, one being a Thunderport 3, whereas the other is simply a USB 3.0 port. You're not afforded a ton of input options, but dongle life is needed if you need extra connections. That leads me kindly to our video partner Kingston, who kindly sent out something to help with data transfer in the form of the HyperX Savage XO SSD, which has a 500 gig storage capacity, super fast data transfer rates that mean you can even use this as a working drive or install games for gaming on the go. The small slim form factor is awesome for slipping into your bag and working on video projects across multiple devices is an integral tool, especially if you have a small amount of space on your laptop or your PC. If you're interested you can find links in the description to the HyperX Savage Exo and thanks again to Kingston for their support in making this video a reality. Back to the design though and the underside has two small vents for cooling that are not even noticeable even when in heavy usage. Opening the MateBook X Pro up again and the rest of the design is nothing short of perfect given the small form factor. Dual speakers are either side of the keyboard and deliver solid audio from such a small chassis. The keyboard is arguably my most favourite besides that found on the ThinkPad X1. Keys have just the right level of travel and a lovely clicky bottoming out sound that really indeeds me to it even more than any other laptop keyboard. It also has a neat little extra in the form of a hidden nose firing webcam between the F6 and F7 key which solves the privacy problem by only being visible when you need it the most. Underneath the keyboard the massive trackpad also hits all of the right notes, although often when the battery is low in the device it seems to be more sensitive to multi finger swipes and touches. Working in tandem with that fantastic keyboard the experience is nothing short of breathtaking. Whereas I will say the hardware is most definitely on the high end, certain aspects do leave something to be desired. Windows 10 performance and general day to day tasks are lightning quick, but even with the powerhouse ultrabook internals of the i7-8565U, 16 gigs of RAM and the MX250 discrete GPU, gaming really isn't recommended unless you really crank down the graphical settings. As an Apex Legends player I managed to get moderate performance on low graphical settings at 1080p, but beyond that it starts to devolve into a choppy mess. Basic gaming is more than possible, but this isn't a gaming machine by any stretch. It offers options, but I'd highly recommend a dedicated gaming laptop for the serious gamers out there. As for productivity and more pro tasks, I've managed to edit a few shorter 4K videos in Premiere Pro, but the timeline can be choppy and unpredictable at times. 
1080p editing though is as smooth as silk and it cuts through renders in no time. I will say that working with proxies for 4K edits is possible, but again, it's not the most stacked machine for video editors out there. As a machine for slightly less intensive tasks than gaming or high level video editing, for instance, including using Lightroom, Photoshop, InDesign, coding, or simply as a lightweight possible office for emails and text editing, the MateBook X Pro genuinely has few rivals. In terms of battery life, the 57.4 watt hour battery manages around 13 hours on a single full charge, which is then managed by the 65 watt USB-C power brick. It's neat being able to use a USB-C charge dock and have a cable that can charge multiple devices at once. That's one of the major bonuses of USB-C over any other proprietary standard. I was told you can use the Mate 20 Pro or P30 Pro charger due to the 40 watt charge speeds, but found that didn't work so well. It does, however, include the ability to quickly share content from your Huawei phones using the tap Huawei share feature. It works well, but it's not something I do a great deal in all honesty. So overall, the entire package is so compelling that the MakeBook X Pro is arguably one of the best Ultrabooks on the market, but it hasn't been without problems. With Huawei having numerous issues with the US government, it was a worry that this might be the last MateBook we could ever see on the market. I'm still of the opinion that this is the best ultra portable Windows 10 laptop currently announced, and it's awesome that the US-China trade bans are set to be lifted soon. Let's just hope that you'll soon be able to buy. If gaming isn't a main priority to you, but overall form factor and portability are, then you seriously shouldn't sleep on the MateBook X Pro. Of course, availability is still pretty limited, and you may have to do some research to try and get hold of one. That said, I will leave some links in the description to places you can get hold of the MateBook X Pro. And be sure to let me know what you think in the comment section below. But as always, this is Damien. Thanks for watching, and I will speak to you later.